Welcome to another video on the I Get Chem channel where we help you learn chemistry the easy way by showing you how to do problems. Uh, today's problem is a, another example of a eigen equation, eigen function, eigen value problem. And um, this will be our last video in the series concerning the fundamental mathematics of quantum mechanics. And um, after this video, we will get into our next series, which is on understanding the quantum realm, where we are going to talk about the fundamental ideas of, for example, the particle wave duality, the de Broglie wavelength, uncertainty principle, the Bohr model, simple ideas like that to get you think a little bit more deeply into what quantum mechanics exactly means. So, uh, uh, if you are interested in those, uh, please do subscribe to the channel, and when those videos uh, come out, you will be you will get the notification. So um, this, as I've said, will be our last example of eigenfunction eigenvalue problems, and uh, the reason why I picked this particular one is uh, pick this particular problem is that. It turns out that the eigenfunction, eigenvalue problem in this one um, not only is an example of the type of problems that you might see in quantum mechanics, it actually is going to be a solution of the harmonic oscillator problem that we will see later. Uh, the harmonic oscillator is a key model problem in quantum mechanics describing vibrations of molecules. So I thought it would be a good idea to actually uh, show how the eigenfunction problem would actually work out for that, and you will see more of that later. So let me read through the problem, and we'll get right to the solution. Show that the function f of y equals to parentheses 16y to the fourth power minus 48y squared plus 12 parentheses times e to the minus y squared over 2 is an eigenfunction of the operator b equals negative d squared dy squared plus y squared and calculate is eigenvalue. Okay, so let's check out the solution. We have a couple of videos already on eigenfunction problems. And so uh, please uh, be sure to watch those two uh, because there are some, they show you some other examples of how these eigenfunction, eigen, eigenvalue problems actually work. But uh, in case you haven't watched those videos, just very briefly, an eigenfunction, eigenvalue problem is the following. So, uh, and let's take the example specifically for this problem. It says that there is an operator B, which when operated on this function, which is here a function of Y, will give you back the same function, F of Y, but multiplied by a constant called an eigenvalue. So equations of this type are called eigenfunction, eigenvalue, eigenequation. Um, and so notice again, on the left side, you have an operator B. The operator performs an operation on the function f of y. And because of that, in general, an operator will modify the function, changing it to something other than the original function. So as we have said, it's rather rare that if you take an operator and apply it to the function, it would actually give back that function. So for every operator and for every kind of boundary condition, uh, there is just a set of very special functions that would actually satisfy this Eigen equation. And um, in in those cases, for this very special set of eigenfunctions, for each of the member of the solution, for each of the eigenfunctions, it will give you back exactly the same function, but multiplied by this value, which is called the eigenvalue corresponding to that specific eigenfunction. 
uh, and the eigenvalue is of course a constant and the word constant in this case means that it is not a function of y. So these problems are called eigen equations or sometimes they're called eigen systems or eigen problems and sometimes they're also called eigen function, eigen value problems because the solutions are a set of eigenfunctions and for each of the eigenfunctions a corresponding eigenvalue. So the problem tells you that for this operator B, so let me write that down, the operator B defined by the problem is minus d squared dy squared plus y squared and uh, it tells you that one of the eigenfunctions of this operator B is this function f of y which is equal to 16y to the fourth power minus 48y squared plus 12 times e to the minus y squared over 2. So if you apply the operator b on f of y, you will get back y multiplied by the value of the eigenvalue, which you are trying to find. So you, you're trying to do two things. You're trying to A, prove. In fact, that B operated on F will give you F back. And uh, the second part is to figure out what is this eigenvalue. Um, so at this point, it's really just mathematics. So you can just literally take B and operate it on F of Y. And if you do all the math correctly, you will get back the correct answer. So I, I hope um, in this problem, I'll try to illustrate some of the mathematical techniques that sometimes you'll find to be useful. Instead of just basically brute force differentiating everything, uh, sometimes if you have your sight on the final solution, you can perhaps simplify the mathematics to make it a little less painful. So let's try to do that. So again, I notice that this function f has two parts. There's this part and it's multiplied by another part. Uh, both of these parts are just functions of y. So I'm going to call the first one g, and this is g of y. I'm not going to write that down specifically, but g is a function of y. And then I'm going to call the second factor h. h is also a function of y. So you can see that basically f is equal to g multiplied by h. The, the reason why I want to do that is notice when I write all of that into the eigenfunction equation, I will get b multiplied or b operated on f of y. But if f of y is written as g of y times h of y, then I am going to have to prove that. It's going to give me back some lambda times g of y times h of y. So you see that what I really want to do is to operate b on the product g and h and show that it actually gives me back g and h. So that is the, the goal and so I want to focus on that goal. So when I do the mathematics, I want to make sure that whichever I'm doing, it's going to help me sort of see that come out. So again, b operated on a product of g, g times h should give back g times h. So here's the strategy. I'm going to take this operator minus d squared y squared plus y squared and operate that on g times h. Now obviously the first factor or the first term is the double derivative of g times h and then the uh, second term is just going to be y times g times uh, y squared times g times h. Again, if you sort of look at what you want to show at the end 
at the end, you're going to want to see that on the right side, when everything comes out at the end, this is just going to be equal to some constant, which is not a function of y, lambda, right? Multiplied by g and h. So you see that whichever you have on the on the left hand side should have g and h in them, but ultimately, in front of the g and h, whichever is there should not have any additional factors of y. So you see, for example, this one that you see in this term, which has a y squared, and that somehow at the end must cancel out with another term because the 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 value on the on the right side at the end must not have a y dependence. Okay, so so you will see that in fact this term right there will actually uh, cancel out the during the differentiation. So to be absolutely clear, I'm going to work through everything. So uh, this video may be a little tedious because there are just a lot of terms in the equations, but I will try to illustrate how the process go. So uh, how the process goes. So just be patient and go over all the terms with me. At the end, you see how everything comes together. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to try to work through that. Uh, that is a double derivative, so it's one derivative first, and then a second derivative after that. Uh, this is easy, just the product rule. So I'm going to write that as g prime h plus h prime g. And now you can easily see that I can do the second derivative. So this is a minus sign. And then the first one will give me uh, two terms. So I'll have g double prime h. And then I'll have a g prime h prime. And then the derivative of the second term will also give me two terms. h double prime times g plus h prime g prime. So the prime in this case is, so So this prime in this case, let me use a different color. So the prime in this case means is d dy, and the double prime in this case is d squared dy squared. Okay, so those are the terms. Let me now group the terms together using the same color again. So I notice that this is just negative uh, g double prime h, and you see there are two of these, so plus 2 g prime h prime, and now finally there is a g h double prime, and there is a negative on the outside. So that's the first term, and then I will have the second term, and of course the second term is just going to be minus uh, plus y squared times gh. So I'm going to put that down too. And so that plus y squared times gh. Again, let me remind you at the end, what we really want to show is that this is equal to lambda times gh. So the sum of those two terms at the end will come out to be lambda times gh. Again, lambda is no y dependence, so whichever is on the left side of this equation will necessarily come out to be g times h times a constant without any additional y dependence outside of the factors g and h. Okay, so let me, let me write down what I mean by that. So whichever is in here must at the end becomes some constant times g times h. Well, I notice this factor is already in that form, except it has a y squared, so that y squared must disappear. But the first factor is a bunch of second and first derivatives of g and h. So it's not clear how that should, in fact, come out to be just a product of g and h. So that's really where the most, that's where the work is, is to basically do the math to show that, in fact, that is true. So let me 
follow with that. I am going to have uh, to differentiate g. So g prime, remember, is uh, d g dy. So g is this function, uh, 16y to the fourth power minus 48y squared plus 12. So uh, dg dy, you can easily work out by just simply differentiating all that, and you will get 64 times y cubed minus 96y. So that's g, uh, g prime. Uh, second term is g double prime. It's just a derivative of that one, so you can just take that and differentiate it once again. And so g double prime is 192y squared plus 96. So there we have g prime and g double prime. So g prime is here, g double prime is there. Okay, now the next thing to do is to calculate h and h, uh, calculate h prime and h double prime. Okay, so let's continue right there. So uh, h is the function right here. h is the function e to the minus y squared over 2. So we can differentiate that pretty easily. Let me write that down. So clearly, h prime is um, minus y multiplied by e to the minus y squared over 2. So you can easily see that the second factor, this one, is really just h. So I can write that as minus y h. And so uh, h double prime. So h double prime in this case is just the derivative of minus y h. So there are two factors. The first one is uh, h, and the second one is uh, y h prime. And uh, you know h prime is minus y h, so you can put in h plus y times minus y h. And so you see that this is minus, expanding everything, minus h plus y squared times h. So you can factor out h, and so this is h times y squared minus 1. Okay, so now that I have those expressions for h prime and h double prime, I'm going to put everything back into the green set of parentheses. But before I do that, let me just write these out again. I notice that this is just negative y double prime h plus 2g prime, but h prime is equal to minus y h, and finally h double prime is equal to uh, h times y squared minus 1. So writing everything in, you see every factor here has a h. So I can actually factor out the h. And so this is g double prime. And you see the second term is minus 2y g prime. And finally, the third factor is g times y squared minus 1. Or if you want, you can just write that g y squared minus g. So that's everything in the parentheses, and now that's all multiplied by h. So you see we are closer because the first factor that is in green, now you can factor out an h, and then whichever is left inside, we know eventually must be something like a g. So all of those terms, those four terms at the end, will come out to be equal to something times g. So that's what we want to focus on. Okay, so that's what we want to do next. 
we want to take what is inside this parentheses containing these factors of g, g prime, and g double prime, and we want to show that uh, that just ends up being something multiplied by g. Okay, so focusing on that set of factors. So I'm going to pick out what I need uh, in the parentheses. Let me just write everything here so we don't forget. Okay, so uh, g double prime is 192 y squared minus 96, which comes from there, uh, minus 2y times g prime, which is uh, 64y cubed minus 96y. So that's uh, g squared, um, g prime, and finally I have g times y squared minus g. Okay, so so that's everything. So multiplying everything out, I have one ninety two y squared minus ninety six. So here I will have one hundred and twenty eight y cube and a uh, plus 192y squared. Finally, I have gy squared minus g. Okay, so you can easily group these terms together. Um, So I guess this is supposed to be a cube, not a square. So that makes this a y to the fourth power. Okay, so now we can see that we have a negative 128y to the fourth power from that term. Uh, we have two of these, so together we have 384y squared. Finally, we have a minus 96 plus gy squared minus g. So you see basically these three terms together. If you compare that against what uh, g is, g is this one. And so you see that whichever is in that parentheses is just equal to negative 8 times g. So that's minus 8g. And finally, the other two terms are gy squared minus another g. So this is minus 9g plus gy squared. Or I can factor out a g, and so this will be my uh, y squared minus 9. So, so that's what's inside this this parentheses right there. Okay. Okay. Finally, it's pretty easy. So, uh, the last term that I have on the left side is just another y squared times g times h. Remember that this is all multiplied by h or multiplied by minus h. So, on the left side, I have minus h g y squared minus 9, and then this factor right there, y squared times uh, gh. And, on, and so I want to show that ultimately when you put everything together, you get back g and h. So in fact, you can see that both factors have g and h. The first one is minus y squared minus 9, and the second one is just plus y squared. And clearly, that comes out to be 9gh. Okay, So what that shows is, in fact, that comes out to be exactly the right side. And now I can see that this eigenvalue lambda is simply just equal to 9. Okay, so. After a lot of math, we have, in fact, shown that this eigenfunction is, in fact, a solution to the eigen equation. 
and the eigenvalue for that turns out to be 9. So I hope that by working this through um, with all the details of the mathematics, you can sort of focus on sometimes there's a better way of organizing your mathematics so that you, um, you are going to help yourself get to the right answer faster by organizing your factors in the appropriate way for the answer to come out the easiest. Okay, so this is the full solution of this problem. And as I've said again, we will uh, go to do other problems to illustrate some of the fundamental concepts of the quantum realm before we go to specific models of quantum mechanics. So uh, please do subscribe to the channel. And when those videos come out, you will get notified.